Hi, and welcome to another educational video by The Entropy System. We have reading glasses now. You know, we could have gotten ones that were subtle. We could have, but it's when we're talking about, so we got these instead. So we're talking about dysphoria today. So dysphoria, of course, means that you do not feel right in your body. Uh, not, not, no, 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 no. You do not feel like the body is your body. It's a very big difference between having issues with your body and feeling like the body is literally not your body. And that is what I experience every time I am out. In the system, I'm the one who seems to experience dysphoria the most, uh, the most intensely and the most frequently. Oh, I, I can't cross my arms without being reminded, oh, that's not a man's body. It's gotten to the point where I can basically go throughout the day, I can change clothes, I can shower, I can go to the bathroom, like all those things that I, I could not experience before without panic attacks, you know, or just straight up disappearing, you know, and whoever was closest to the front other than me got shoved out into the body. I can do that stuff now because what I've done is I've sort of disconnected myself from the body one step further and you know instead of being like this should be my body but it's not my body I don't look like this I view Wynn's body as a costume that I'm slipping in to the Wynn costume and of course I see Wynn when I look in the mirror because this is Wynn's costume and you know Daniel is inside of it, but he's got his own body and he is definitely male. And if anyone saw him, they would know without a doubt that that's his body and this is Wynn's body. You know, so like, I don't know, it's kind of a mind game, like a playing tricks on myself uh, to, to add that extra level of disconnect. And now looking down and seeing a female figure, or female clothing, you know, doesn't bother me as much. Like it, it's still uncomfortable. I don't foresee it ever not being uncomfortable on some level because there isn't a Daniel body inside the costume. You know, I, I'm never going to be able to walk around and have my own body. No matter how complicated the lie is that I tell myself of why this body doesn't look like me, you know, that reality is always going to be there. This is actually not something that I really struggle with anymore. It used to be something that was a lot more difficult because even though like I'm a female and this is a female body, I, this it has different proportions than my body. I'm taller than the body in the headspace um, by a good couple inches. Also, growing up, a lot of the time the body was underweight and so I identified with that level of thinness. And so now that the body is a very healthy weight, I was like, oh my God, we're so squishy. Not that I had trouble with the body being that size, but I very closely identified with that feeling of thin. So when I came out and we were, you know, bigger, um, like healthy bigger, I'm not trying to body shame. This is a very healthy weight and a very lovely body that we live in. But I just couldn't get past the fact that it was shorter and whiter than what I identify as myself. So yeah, there was a lot of discomfort. Seeing Wynn's face in the mirror was also very, very uncomfortable because it felt almost invalidating, like just reminding me of like this feeling of like, oh, you're not actually real. You don't really exist. This isn't your body. You're made up, which I know that like that none of that's true. <laughs> I am real. I'm not made up. And, and this is you know, my body to an extent, even though I don't necessarily identify with it. Um, there was a big shift when I started being out so much and then I eventually took on the title of co-host, kind of like owning how much I was out and how invested I was in the outside world. Like once I really owned it, once I was like, okay, I'm calling myself this, it just, there was a big mental switch. And so now I can look in the mirror and I see Wynn's face, but I kind of recognize it as mine too. And I find myself identifying a lot more with the body, which is great because that means like the dysphoria is almost non-existent at this point. It's still like, this still is not totally me, you know, but I feel way more comfortable with it. It's the face that I see in the mirror all the time now. And I guess through exposure and through seeing that, 
that and then like watching videos of like her facial expressions and my facial expressions you know like the way we talk and, and use our hands when we talk and everything like there's enough of a big difference that when I watch those videos I can be like oh I can see myself in myself that's not just a win costume that's like I, I see myself in there I would say most of the time I don't have any dysphoria and it's not until I take moments to like sit down and actually think about it that I feel like the lingering effects but I definitely feel like since I've been so invested in being out and stuff that I have like had been able to move on from those feelings even though I still don't identify completely with the body if that makes sense <laughs> it feels a little weird talking about dysphoria being a woman in a woman's body or a girl in a woman's body but I'm 12. This is not my face. This is not my body. And it's weird. It's like wearing the dress and the makeup, like overcompensating helps. But like, the, like this bone structure is a grown up bone structure. And like, my face is too big. And my, you know, the area around my eyes is too wrinkly. And, you know, like I'm too curvy. And that's not like me hating on my body. Like objectively, this is a good body to have, but it's not mine, you know? And like, I'll try to take selfies and it's hard because I try everything that I can to just like feel like myself and like the pictures that I'm taking. But all I see is, wow, that face looks really old. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, it's it's weird. It's weird coming out front. It's weird, you know, seeing a photo of myself or like looking in the mirror for too long if I'm not wearing like my outfit and my makeup. Um, I don't know, I don't know how to make this not uncomfortable. Dressing up helps, dressing up helps a lot, you know, cause the body doesn't look like this unless I'm in the body or unless I'm about to be in the body and Win or Kit is making, you know, doing my makeup for me. You know, every, everything about this body, the dimensions, the height, the shape face, the eye color, it's, it's, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. It doesn't fit who I am, who Kim Kim is, you know? Like, I have, no, I have no beef with this body. I'm not saying like, oh, I wish I were, I wish I were. It's just, it's not, it's not mine. It's, it's wins and I'm just in her body and I don't know like I think that since the last body I remember us having was what I considered mine you know when when the body was 12 I thought of that as my body and just like shooting from point A to point B with like no memory of what happened in between sucks like I didn't get an adjustment period as the body changed it just changed like I woke up one day you know like 13 going on 30 <laughs> you just wake up one day and you're like oh this is new okay you know and you just have to deal with it because there's no there's literally nothing I can do about it I mean, it's not gonna go away <laughs> so yeah that's my feelings on dysphoria makeup helps makeup helps a lot doing dark colors, uh, which are not commonly worn. So it is not, I do not see this face with these colors in the mirror. So it helps me feel distinguished as myself because the dark colors represent me to a certain degree. But that doesn't change the fact that I am a Mexican man and this is a white woman's body. And it's very difficult. It's very difficult many days. I do not like spending lots of time in the body unless there is something exciting and I can distract myself from the body that I am in by focusing on what is happening around me. So good food, new sports, working out, anything that is fast paced or exciting, gets blood pumping, that is what I like to do. Otherwise I don't like to spend time outside because I do not like being in a woman's body. I do not like it, I do not like it at all. Um, I Working out helps me feel more like myself but at the same time, the, the weights that we lift are very small. I, Lido, I as Lido, I'm a very strong person. I've worked very hard to have a hard body, large muscles, very physically strong. This body 
is not very physically strong. And so when I, when I push and I feel the burning of the muscles, it feels so familiar and good. And then when I focus more and I realize that I am benching the bar, just the bar, and already reaching muscle failure, or, or that you know I, I, am, I am lifting five pound dumbbells and doing flies and my shoulder's already hard, is discouraging. It's discouraging, but my desire to have the physically strong body pushes me through so I don't stop. I also don't like the color of the skin. I feel that it takes away from me somehow, that I'm in a white body. I feel like my experiences and my desires to be a part of my culture that I remember are less legitimate because I am in a white body. Physical unpleasantness that comes with a female body, uh, cramps, you know, periods, I sort of, I try to view them as just a new adventure. Oh look, a new experience. Let's embrace this new experience. I try to forget about the fact that I would never have that, ever. Everything about this body is the opposite of who I identify as. This is very hard to speak because I don't like to focus on this at all. Uh, and it makes me feel a little lightheaded to focus on something so unpleasant for so long, um, but I'm trying very hard to convey my feelings to you. Yes, I suppose distraction is the only way that I can really feel comfortable with this. Distraction and finding small things that make me feel more like me. Like deep red lipstick makes me feel very much like me. Being with friends who enjoy being with me and don't feel... Being in situations where I have to be win is very hard because it just reminds me that I am not me. This is not my body. Everything about having this body is uncomfortable. <laughs> Everything about it. Uh, oh, yes, naturally, my voice. My voice and my accent that everybody else is embarrassed about in the system, everybody else is very embarrassed about. And they try to keep me from coming out because they do not want other people to hear my voice and ask questions. They think that it sounds silly. They constantly tell me I have a silly voice. Not everybody, but some of the members of the system tell me I have a silly voice and that I should try to change it or that I shouldn't front because people will make fun of me or make fun of them. So not even having the ability to speak like I should speak, I don't even have that. That physical aspect of the body where the muscle memory forms the words in a certain way, which is not the way that I would form them, and reteaching the body how to speak the way I want to speak. Everything about it is not okay. It makes me very sad. So, anyway. I hope to, this was an enjoyable video. I hope you learned and I hope you have a good day. Thanks everybody so much for watching. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We love reading what you have to say below. I really hope you enjoy our videos. We enjoy making them. Johnny, bye. Bye.